Welcome to Saving the Past. I am GD. Hope you're all doing fine today. I want to do a little experiment here today, but first I want to discuss something with you. How many of you heard the term velocity when it comes to currency? Well, velocity is, for those of you that don't know, um, actually an example of it is, is going on right now, at least the government's hoping it does. All those stimulus checks that you folks have been mailed out, I hope all of you did get one, I know some did not, but um, velocity is where the government uh, tries to flood the market with money, and that's what they're doing right now, and they hope that you will spend that money instead of saving it. And the more times that those dollars get turned over, the more velocity that currency has. Well, I did my part. I received my stimulus check. I've done some buying lately. And uh, some of that's going to be an experiment I'm going to do here today with you. Some of it's going to be for some future videos. But let me just go over some of the things that I have purchased. Um, I have never used one of these before. I use a um, oxypropane uh, torch setup. But what I wanted to do was a little experiment here that was affordable that maybe uh, some of you, if you wanted to experiment, you could do something on an inexpensive level. But I bought a MAP uh, Pro uh, torch here. This one here is uh, a Benzomatic. Uh, they may all be what's available at your local hardware store. Um, propane by itself just is not hot enough to melt any quantity of silver. So I thought I'd give this uh, MAP uh, gas, MAP Pro um, unit a try. I bought this at a local hardware store. It was $50. Um, a couple videos back, I told you folks about a mold frame that I bought. Um, <clears throat> I have always used cast iron and for, for the molds that I use to pour so that I could roll out sheet and wire and things of that nature. Um, I don't like the graphite ones, but they are affordable. So if you folks want to experiment, that's a good way to go. But this one here is... Uh, milled steel one. I've never used steel before, so this is going to be an experiment for me as well as for you. I have no clue how much each one of these are uh, for weight that's going to be used, so that's going to be an experiment, and I'm thinking none of them are going to be one ounce. They all look like they're probably a little too deep for one ounce, but what I have put together is one ounce of sterling silver scrap metal that I'm going to use for this experiment. And again, I do not believe it's gonna fill one of those, so this may be a big fail um, until I know the exact weight. Now, since I'm using sterling silver, um, sometimes after you've done something with sterling silver, you have to do a process called pickling. Um, and I'm going to be using a uh, flux on there as well to clean the metal, and I'm going to be using borax for that. I wanted to explain a few of the processes here now um, so that I could tell you what you could possibly do. Um, I use technical borax, which I buy from uh, supply houses, which is a real fine powder borax, but you could very easily use... 20 mule team detergent borax that you can pick up at the local grocery store. Um, that is used uh, as you're melting the metal. Uh, you're going to put a little bit in there to clean the metal with as it's melting. And um, for afterwards, if there's any kind of, uh, of that flux that's left on there, any of that uh, borax that's left on there, which will create a glassy type uh, surface on there. Uh, there are various ways you could clean it off, but the easiest way is to pickle it. Um, I always used a commercial grade of, um, of pickle solution, but there's no need to do that. Um, I use now um, just a simple citric acid uh, that you can pick up at health food stores, maybe at grocery stores as well. 
And instead of using a commercial pickle pot, I just use a small crock pot. So, um, and, and the percentage that you use really isn't that important. Uh, this jar here is four ounces. And I pour in about, this is a powder that's in here. I pour about um, a quarter to a third of this into a one quart um, crock pot. I fill it up with water, I heat it up and stir it. Um, and once it gets warm, then you could pickle the uh, silver that you've um, used afterwards to clean it up. Anyway, let me get set up. Oh, a few of the other things I did buy. And these will be for future videos. I've been wanting for some time to put together a collection of currency um, um, special serial numbers. Um, and I'm looking for certain ones, so it's going to be a, a while before I put that collection together. But once I do, I'm going to um, share that in a video with you folks. But the other thing that I did buy, which was the major purchase that I made for um, that money that was sent to me, was I bought an electric uh, melting furnace. I have always used just a torch to melt my metal. Um, there are plenty of videos out there on YouTube where you could build a homemade gas-fired furnace uh, relatively inexpensively. Uh, and you could buy electric uh, melting furnaces. They're all over the place. Uh, you've heard me say I am not into buying Chinese goods. So I spent a little time looking and um, I really wanted to buy an American-made one, but the only American-made ones I found were on uh, sites where, and I do still have um, my business license and sales tax number, so I could have very easily bought one of those. But I wanted to buy something someplace that would be available for you folks to buy if you ever chose to do so. Um, so I wound up buying one made in Italy. And I bought it through a company called Rio Grande, uh, it, and they are in New Mexico. Um, anybody can buy off of Rio Grande. You do not need a business license to be able to buy from them. And why did I choose this Italian one? Well, I could have bought something cheaper on eBay or Amazon or any of those places, but they were all Chinese-made ones, and I refused to buy something like that. Plus... My grandparents came from Italy, so I'm very happy to spend a little money on something that helps some of the people from the country my grandparents were from. Okay, folks, I am going to get set up here uh, for melting this, and as I say, uh, your guess is as good as mine how this is going to turn out. Even if it's a fail, I'm going to show the video. And um, the biggest fail will be not knowing which one of these to pour this one ounce into. This is way too small. So I'm probably going to try this one right here. Um, this is actually about the size of a one ounce um, ingot, uh, one of the bars that you buy. But this is quite a bit thicker. So I'm assuming this is going to be an ounce and a half to two ounces. This is smaller diameter than um, the one ounce bars that you generally buy, like the art bars, but it's deeper. So this is the one I'm gonna try. And if it fails, if it winds up being too much metal for there, I'll remelt it and try it over here. Okay, let me get set up and we will do an experiment here and see if this Benzomatic here with Map Pro Gas is going to be something that'll work for anybody that wants to try something like this. Okay, we're going to get set up here. <coughs> I'm going to use a uh, crucible here that I have. There is a little bit of metal still in there from other times, but it's only a couple little particles. Um, this is the Map Pro uh, gas torch I'm using here on this. I'm warming up the uh, crucible before I put the metal in it. I have got a, uh, I normally would not do that, I would just use the same torch to heat up uh, <clears throat> my uh, mold frame, but 
So we're going to add some silver in here. There's an ounce of silver there. We'll see how long this takes for this to melt in this. Well, some of it's already melting, so this torch might be a good torch for doing small quantities of silver. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but uh, it's taken a little longer than it would with an oxypropane torch, but this looks... I'm going to throw a little pinch of borax in there. for this but it's not looking like it's going to melt it as fast as I'd want it. So my camera shut off on me. I don't know what it points so I, I hope that um, I did get enough of it to be able to put this together for you folks. Um, the map gas did not um, work as well as I had thought that it was going to work. I've heard other people have used map gas to be able to melt silver. For me, it just did not seem to work well enough, and I don't want to let this experiment go to waste. Um, I want to see what I can get out of this mold frame, so I am going to set up with my bigger uh, oxypropane torch and finish melting this metal and um, do it with the oxypropane torch. Um, on this Map Pro, uh, one of the problems I was having is, is when I turned it downwards with the uh, nozzle, the flame seemed to have um, sputtered and gotten weaker. Um, I have heard, I did not see one, but um, I have heard there's an attachment you can do from the tank to the nozzle, uh, a hose type part where you can leave the tank upright and be able to use the hose, which allows it to burn better. So if any of you want to experiment with the Map Pro, maybe that's something you want to look into is the hose attachment that goes from the tank to the nozzle. But in the meantime, I'm going to set up with a bigger torch and get this melted. Well, I wasn't going to let this experiment go to complete waste, so I brought out the bigger torch. We will get this melted and see if this mold frame's uh, going to work. But it looked like when I poured that in there, the um, one that I'm set up for might be too small or too big so we may want to move that over a little bit and see if we can catch this other one but I think that'll melt the I think that'll keep the whole thing warm but this will melt a lot quicker with this torch And I did pick up the little piece that I dropped there, if that was actually caught on the video before the camera died. And I put it back in here so that I've got um, the full ounce back in there again. So let's try that smallest one and see how that works. And if that doesn't work, well, we will remelt it. Okay, well, big difference in time. Oxypropane has uh, always been a favorite of mine because it's clean burning, it's fast. I'm going to throw another pinch in here. I'm going to get this metal good and liquefied. And we're going to try this smallest one and see what happens here.
Well, that was interesting. So that's uh, that mold there is uh, less than one ounce. It overflowed, but this is a good test for me. I'm going to shut the camera off, get that out, and I think we're going to remelt it and see how it does in that middle one, which I think it's going to be too little metal for there, but we will test it. Okay, folks, I'm just going to show you what I wound up with here. This wound up being too much metal for that smallest one, so we're going to try it one more time. I don't think this is going to be enough metal for the um, other one. I'm not getting that in the picture, am I? Okay. So there we go. There was uh, <clears throat> too much metal for that smallest one. We're going to try it again one more time with the biggest one. Give me one second here. Okay, we're going to try it one more time on the center one. I was hoping one of these were going to be a one ounce size, but it doesn't look like it. Okay, well that's the beauty of the oxypropane, it melts really quickly. So let's try this one. as I suspected. So that's more than one ounce. So I think we're done with this experiment for today. I'm going to have to experiment a little bit more to find out uh, exactly how many ounces that uh, frame takes. I'm guessing it's somewhere around two to three ounces. Let's get that one out of there and see what we've got. Let's quench it. It actually looks like it's going to be a nice mold frame. It doesn't do too badly. Uh, there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, pattern there from the uh, dye making on it. You can see the darkness on here. That's uh, what the um, the citric acid is going to be used for to remove that and this will be nice and white afterwards. Um, and actually Actually, that's uh, not too bad. 
I think what it's going to take is probably somewhere between two and three ounces for that center one. And I think I'm going to have to do a few tests to find out exactly how much metal it's going to use. I think what I'm going to do is wait until the um, electric kiln gets here. <coughs> um, I got the one kilogram size and I'll just melt a bunch of silver and I'll pour all three of those frames there and then weigh the metal afterwards so that I can see what it did. Well, uh, again, the map gas didn't work out the way I had expected it to. If any of you decide you want to try it out, you may want to look into the um, hose attachment for it. As I had mentioned, that might help. Um, I think it wasn't getting hot enough when it was tipped downward, so I think that's what the problem was with that. Um, any of you that want to get serious about this kind of thing, um, oxypropane um, torches, they're a little bit expensive, but um, they melt really quickly and uh, cleanly. Uh, you can use acetylene. Acetylene's a little bit um, smokier type gas that you're going to wind up using. Um, it can get hotter if you use acetylene with oxygen. Um, <clears throat> but um, oxypropane is what I've used for all my life and I love it. But anyway, just thought I'd share this with you. I will clean it up and I will show it to you one last time before I finish this video. Okay folks, I uh, put it in the pickle for a little while. It cleaned up nicely. Um, the darkness that you saw on it was the uh, copper that's in the sterling silver. It came to the surface and the pickle removes that. Um, it left a nice white pure silver uh, finish on the outside of it. If I wanted to clean this up I could um, brush it with a brass wire brush with some soapy water. Um, if I wanted to go a little further with it I could add a little uh, baking soda to that mixture. Or I could throw it in a tumbler, or I could um, wind up buffing it by hand on a buffing wheel. Um, but I'm not going to do anything with it because uh, it didn't create a complete bar out of it. So I am just going to throw it back into the melt probably when I do the next experiment. But I just wanted to share it with you. It wound up weighing 31 grams, so one-tenth of a gram wound up sticking inside the crucible and didn't come out. Um, but that's close enough for what I wanted to experiment with. It wound up having some nice ripples in the surface from the uh, propane torch that I had on it. If I wanted to have gotten more ripples, I could have rocked the... Um, I could have rocked the... Uh, <clears throat> ingot former while it was still hot but um, again this was just an experiment and I want to share with you so in conclusion the map gas did not work the way I had hoped it would have worked I would have probably been better off spending my uh, money on a new camera that I have said many a times that I need um, but that's okay it was an experiment I wanted to share it with you folks I know some of you might be into wanting to learn about pouring bars and um, I wanted to see if that inexpensive map gas torch would wind up working. Um, again, I think it probably would work because it did melt the silver um, but it kept on freezing up every time I turned the torch downward. So I think the th key is, is if you're going to do something like that as an experiment, uh, try and find the hose attachment that goes onto the tank and onto the end of the um, torch head and that probably would solve the problem. I'm not going to go out and buy another part for this but uh, it was just a, an experiment, a $50 experiment. I'm sure I'll use the torch for something else somewhere along the line but um, just wanted to share that with you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did please leave some comments down below. Um, <clears throat> And uh, if any of you are new to the channel, um, please hit the little subscribe button if you like this. I do also discuss uh, many aspects about gold and silver and about uh, what I see in the economy. 
um, and share your thoughts. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And for all of you that have been with me for a long time and you leave comments every time, I sure do appreciate each and every one of you. Okay, folks, I hope you're all staying safe. Have a great day. We'll talk soon. This is GD. Take care.